Hello, thank you so much, those of you who are in Corpus Christi and the Coastal Bend. We appreciate you joining us today. And also, we want to speak to those of our, of our brothers and sisters in Asia. Thank you so much for tuning in from Asia and Africa, Europe, here in North America, Central America, South America, Australia, and the islands of the sea. We welcome you. I know sometimes uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody wonders, is he just saying that? No, I'm not just saying that. There are people from all those locations that are watching us uh, from time to time. So sometimes they're regulars and sometimes uh, they're intermittent, but they still watch us. And we sure appreciate you doing that. We just bless you in the name of Jesus. As, as we've said, the body of Christ is one. And we all must uh, recognize the body of Christ and, and that we have brothers and sisters from various places in the world. Uh, and we want to give them also a shout out that we're one body. The Lord has been moving on me a lot about this one body thing. It's amazing because whenever a part of my personal body is hurting, I don't get angry with it. When it doesn't do what I need it to do, uh, you know, perhaps my hand is hurting for, and I've not done anything. I've not mistreated it. And it's not helping me. You know, it, you know, those are the kinds of things we go through. But we don't just say, well, just cut the thing off, you know. We don't do that. But we we take care of it. And we, we put salve on it. We go check with a doctor to make sure it's okay because we want a healthy body. And the Lord says, I want you to be like that. Even even about body parts, people, <laughs> body parts who are acting cantankerous. He said, I want you to treat them just like you would your foot if your foot is sore or your hand is not working right or your elbow is having a little issue. I want you to treat them the same way. Oh, Jesus, that's a challenge, but I, I'm, I'm up to it. I'm up to that challenge. Why? Because I want to hear him say, not well done um no well done good and faithful servant not well done um no thank you jesus so let us walk this thing out all right thank you so much for coming we bless you in the name of jesus christ the greatest name in the annals of the universe the name of jesus we thank you so much father for jesus being manifested in the midst of us today in your name jesus we pray and give god the father all the glory amen 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 well sister stephanie estamos listos amen yes estamos listos we are ready all right let us worship together Flows. There's a fountain that drowns sorrow. There's an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising.
his name that shakes the mountain tops the only word that breaks the curses off your name the one that covers all is higher than the others higher than the others
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, you're so amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for just being good to us and allowing us to come into your presence where there's fullness of joy. Thank you, Lord God, that you've given us this amazing life. You've done things for us that are just, what we would say, they're astronomical. You told us that so shall your word be that goes forth from your mouth. It will not return to you void. And we believe in that. It shall accomplish what you please and it shall prosper in the thing for which you sent it. We believe it. We believe it because Kiara wanted to stay with her grandparents. It didn't look all that good. But you made it happen. You made it happen. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for her. Thank you for what you've done for her. Thank you that you've given her a testimony. You've shown her how faithful you can be. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for just blessing her to the highest mountain and even beyond. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're our provision, and Mike and Laurie need provision and you're our provision they need you to provide transportation they don't want to just watch from Facebook or YouTube or some other uh, platform they want to be here they want to drive their own car and so we believe that you're going to do exactly that for them that's their request do it in the name of Jesus and Lord Jesse needs deliverance from addictions. Lord God, deliver him from addictions. You said, Lord, that we don't know how to pray as we ought. We don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Lord God, thank you for helping Jesse. Jesse wants a job, but Jesse needs to be clean. Heal him. Take the addictions away. Heal him till he's sick no more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You said, I am the Lord who heals you. Lord God, we thank you for healing us. We thank you for doing something in Belarus. Thank you for doing something in Belarus. <clears throat> Lord... I ask that you would deal with us, that strong man. You said you've got to first bind the strong man. And then you can plunder his goods. I ask that you would bind the strong man. I said we bind that strong man. We bind him, Lord, in the name of Jesus over Belarus. We pray that you would take him out of the way. And, and his administration as well. We pray that you would judge them in Jesus' name. And that one who attacked the Ukrainian people, Lord, judge him. We bind him in the name of Jesus. Let his best laid plans go awry in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And bind, deal with all the liars and the cheaters in Jesus' name. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Give us more opportunity to do your will, we pray. And Lord God, I pray for my wife, my dear wife. I ask you to...
to give her strength today. Give her strength, Lord, that she's not had for a good, a good while. Have mercy and help her. Make her strong, we pray. And all who are suffering tonight, those who are in this house, and those who are online, heal their bodies. Make them strong that they might do the work of Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory and the honor for it. And it is in your name we pray. And we exult in your name and in all of your promises. Through Jesus Christ, Father. Amen and amen. Jehová es mi pastor, nada me faltará. Jehová es mi pastor, nada me faltará. Aunque ande en valle de sombra de muerte, no temeré mal alguno porque tú estarás conmigo. Tú eres digno de toda gloria, de toda honra, de toda alabanza. Alabamos tu nombre. Te adoramos, te glorificamos. Tú eres digno. Tú eres digno. Tú eres digno, Señor. Rey de reyes y Señor de señores. Cordero de Dios. Todopoderoso, nombre sobre todo nombre. Te damos gloria, Señor. Te damos gracias. Te damos gracias por tu amor, por tu presencia. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Santo, Santo, Santo. given to you to know it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear for assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. In the above passages, Jesus tells us that many prophets and righteous men wanted to sit down at the table with God and converse with him as he unfolded to them the secrets of the ages. 
Many prophets wanted to have what you and I sometimes take for granted. You and I are privileged to have audience with God at any time without a prior appointment or consideration for his schedule or with regards to what he might be doing. He is with us. He can never leave us. We are now his house, the place where he dwells. What a privilege. What blessedness. He is wonderful to give us such a covenant. Since it has been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God and to hear things uttered by his spirit that have never been spoken to man, we must become proactive in everything. We have been given so much in regard to things eternal. He causes us to reign in life. He causes us to reign in life. Let us look to him who is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus, who has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. The scripture says he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Therefore, let us understand him and thus do the will of God. We have the mind of Christ. This mind always wants to express itself in every area of life. Be encouraged as you seek his understanding, Pastor Don. Lord, it's good to know him, isn't it? It's good to be intimately acquainted with Jesus, to know him deeply. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, praise team. We appreciate worshiping with you. Thank you, Sister Stephanie, for leading us in worship. I love, love that. Thank you, Lord. Well, it is now time to release our children. The youth will be staying in here tonight as Pastor Jackson is bringing the word, but our children are free to head out with Pastor Jadita.
everybody. Well, my name is Tim Mutchler. I'm the pastor of the young adults here at the fellowship, and I love being with the people of God. We're so glad that you're here. If we have any first time guests with us tonight, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand, we'd love to greet you, say hello to you, and we also have a gift for you. Any first time guests tonight? Let's see. I'm going to scan extra long tonight because sometimes I miss those hands. It's like everybody in the congregation can see them except for me. <laughs> Okay, all right, everybody. Well, we can go ahead and stand up in the house and greet one another for a while.
invite everybody, if we could find our seats, we'll continue with the next portion of the service. It's good to see everyone tonight, isn't it? Yeah, good to be with our friends, good to be with our family in the Lord. Yeah. Our relationship runs deeper than blood. Isn't that good? Yeah, our relationship with one, one another runs deeper than blood. And I found uh, very commonly that with believers, I have much more to talk about about than I do even with my own blood sometimes. Not my not my Christian blood, you know, Christian family, but but with the rest of the family that doesn't know the Lord yet, yet. But the work continues, right? The love of Jesus continues. Well, let's go ahead and jump into our video announcements. Thank you so much for finding your seats. We'll get you some information right up on the screens. Fellowship family, it is so wonderful to worship our amazing Lord with you today. I'm Jennifer, and here are some announcements. Be sure to check out the Fellowship's outside LED sign as we celebrate our 2023 high school and college graduates. We rejoice with them. God has indeed done great things for them. Join us at Kingsville Christian Fellowship on Thursday at 7 p.m. for midweek worship service and on Saturday at 9 a.m. for weekly Bible study class. If you are not able to join in person at KCF, join us through the live stream on KCF's Facebook page. Come and be a part of the great things that God is doing in Kingsville. Join Brother Henry Williams downtown at the CCPD police station for an evening of prayer for our police department, city, state, and nation this Thursday at 7 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Make plans to join us July the 21st and the 22nd for a movie weekend. We will be watching Jesus of Nazareth for a six-hour epic of the gospel story. It's one of Pastor's all-time favorites. We will have food, snacks, and beverages available on both days. Join us Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. and on Saturday from 11.30 a.m. through 5 p.m. This will be a great time with our church family. Please feel free to invite your friends and your neighbors, but please sign up in the foyer to let us know that you're coming. Our next landscape day is Saturday, July the 29th, and we need you. We have some projects for our men and ladies. We want to get those flower beds looking great again, so please sign up in the foyer. Grab your gloves and join us Saturday, July the 29th at 9 a.m. Come and be a part of the fun. We'll now return to our wonderful worship service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. All right. All right. Well, congratulations to our graduates again. I'm looking for you. All right. I've got all of your names up there. Mm -hmm. We'll be... You'll be hearing from us soon, either Vanessa or myself, okay? We've got a young adults group for you that we'd like you to get connected to, amen? And then, again, our movie weekend is this weekend. Please RSVP either by texting pastor. Um, if you do not receive those messages, please let us know, and we'll get you on the list, uh, that roster, so that you can receive communication from pastor, and you can also sign up in the foyers. Please do so tonight, okay? It's very important that we have an accurate count as well. As pastors mentioned, please do not RSVP unless you're coming, all right? All right. We know emergencies happen, but please don't just willy-nilly RSVP and then not come because, you know, you have a total in your foot, you know. <laughs> All right, it's now time for our tithes and our offering. All right, if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand and we'll see to it that you get one. Thank you so much. We have three ways to give and those ways will be up on the screen. I'd like to remind you tonight of our Indonesia trip that is coming up very soon and then we'll also be going to Zambia and Pakistan. Please, if the Lord puts it on your heart, give towards that. Don't be uh, slow to do whatever it is that the Lord has called you to do. These are very important trips where we're taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Sometimes we can take the gospel for granted because we hear it Sunday and Wednesday, but no, when we hear it Sunday, Wednesday, that's to feed us, not so that we can take it for granted, but so that we can become all the more zealous for the Lord and to know him. And so pastor has endeavored the last 37 years of this ministry and the last 50 years to take the gospel to the world and let's join him in those efforts. And we thank you so much because so often the church has just been there, been there to give and to pray and to be there. Amen. We appreciate you so much. You can just earmark that on your envelopes uh, or if you give online, you can mark that uh, Indonesia 
trip or the Zambia and Pakistan trip. But the Indonesia trip is the next one, correct, sir? The Indonesia trip is our next one. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to give to you, to tithe, Lord God. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your presence above all else. And we thank you for opportunity to give back. We pray that you will bless the nations of the world through this church as we minister the gospel. And may we all be hungry, hungry to do your will, Lord, fervent in knowing you, Jesus, and in doing your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will bless the gift and the giver tonight so much, Lord, exceedingly abundantly above they could ever ask for or think. Amen and amen. Let's receive the tithes and the offerings. Thank you, Sister Amy. That was excellent. It's like uh, she was playing the strings of my heart. You know what I mean? And I know the Lord is up there just going, oh, Amy Villardi, all right. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. My name is Jack Lindsay. I'm the pastor of the youth here at the fellowship and uh, very excited to be here. Welcome to part two of a message I started last week. I'm so excited about that, man. I feel like a little kid in a candy store. All right. Um, so last week we talked about uh, trust mainly, but the title of last week's message was Believing Forges Obedience. Everybody say, Believing Forges Obedience. So last week we talked about trusting, and, and I think that was the low-hanging fruit. That's kind of why we went over that pretty quickly. We as a society, we talk about trust a lot, uh, whether we trust the news, or we trust our friends, or we trust whether or not food is healthy for us, or things like that. There's a lot of things that we either trust or don't trust, and it's something that we deal with a lot. But I don't find that we talk about believing a lot. 
I don't find that being a very big topic of our conversation unless we're talking about theology or talking about things of the Lord. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I went there. And I wanted to kind of give you a couple of examples before we jump into the meat of tonight's message, just to kind of get you back in the mindset of it. Uh, so talking about trusting the Lord last week, and there was a... A story that I wanted to tell you all that happened in one of our staff prayer times. Uh, one of our staff members was telling us about how well their husband takes care of them. And uh, they did that by telling a story where they were driving one time and their car ran out of gas. And we were saying, like, well, how did you not know that your car didn't have gas in it? I mean, come on. That's like the first thing you do before you go anywhere is to make sure am I going to get where I'm going. And her response was, well, I never check because my husband always fills up my truck for me. I never have to look because he's always doing it. And man, we made fun of that person. <laughs> Boy, did we make fun of him. And then, and Pastor, you had asked me to lead prayer that day. You weren't there. I don't think all that would have happened if you were there, honestly. But uh, he asked me to lead prayer, and so I started off praying right before I did. The Holy Spirit convicted me in that moment and said, you've been, you know, ribbing this individual, but that's what I do for you. I fill up your tank for you. But why are you staring at the meter? Why do you look at it? Why do you make sure, oh, I don't know. You know what? We don't have enough. I'm not going to go. He's going, I'm the one that's taking care of you. And this is a picture of Jesus taking care of us. Another example here of trusting the Lord was I was teaching children's church. And uh, I was talking about trusting the Lord. And I was talking about us being sent out like missionaries like Paul was. And so I was trying to get it uh, down to the kids' level, making it real and, and make them maybe see some examples about modern day. And so I said to the kids, uh, how would you feel if the Lord told you to go preach the gospel in Russia right now? And trying to put, put kind of in perspective what Paul was dealing with. And there was this one kid named Daniel, and he was very uh, light, and he said, I'd do it. Easy. God said it. I believe it. I'm going to do it. And I tried to, like, get him to see the reality that he's facing, that it's not just like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go do this real quick, real easy. And I started talking to him about, uh, about plane tickets and, and money and potential fear from governments and things like that. And he just said, plainly, after I gave him a list of all these things, he said, again, if God said it, then why wouldn't he provide those things for me? Why wouldn't he protect me? His comment stopped me right in my tracks, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, you used to be just like this kid. You used to trust me fully and completely. But over the years, you've become more aware of the cogs in life. And it's the part of, and, and, and he said, you've become more aware of the cogs in your life. Now that has become, because I've, I've gotten a little bit higher up in different types of leadership, and I've seen things. I've seen things that are required in extra pieces. But it's like Peter looking at the wind and the waves instead of keeping your eyes on Jesus. So faith like a child is so valuable, and we cannot afford to lose that as we get older. But God is so faithful and just that he restores us even when we maybe have a lack of faith. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 13, it says, Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. But if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. And I think about Peter a lot in this particular verse, in that he disowned Christ. But the very first thing that Jesus did after defeating death, hell, and the grave was he went back and made sure Peter was okay and restored him before he went up to be with the Father and do all the things that he needed to do. He cares about us, and he wants to make sure that we're okay to do what it is that he's asked us to do. So now we're entering into the crux of the message here. I want to give you three things that Pastor Don uh, gave me before uh, even preaching last week. One of the things that he told me is that God is training us to reign. That is the purpose of being here on this earth. We are being trained to reign with him forever. This life is not about watching Netflix. This life is not about cheering on the Green Bay Packers. This life is not about doing these wonderful, entertaining things that we do. This life is about learning to be like his son because he needs to hand it over to people who are going to do what Jesus did, which was, Father, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? That's what he's training us to do. The second thing he told me was, you can't teach anyone anything until you teach them to obey. If they don't obey, you can't teach them anything. 
And I've seen this. I've seen this in kids with their parents on an outside. I've watched it in my own house sometimes when I'm trying to teach something, but it's like they're not listening, not paying attention. They've got to be able to obey first before they'll learn anything else. And the third thing he told me was you can't trust a horse until you've broken it in. Until you've broken the horse, you can't trust it. And so the Lord breaks us. He brings us through situations. He takes us through things that bring us to a place where we will submit. I would do a, um, when I was teaching and coaching at Ray, I would do a, a practice. And one of our drills that we would do is I would make the kids play matches where they're, under, they're um, starting behind in the score. That's what I'm trying to say. So I would send them out to the courts and I'd say, okay, you two, you're losing already. So, like to put it in football terms, it would say, like if you were starting a football game down 0 to 21, okay, something like that. I'd say, all right, you're down. But at the end of the game, if you lose, you're going to run four miles. But coach, we're already down. We're already behind. That's not fair. Well, bro, have you ever been in a match where you've been down and you really want to win? You Figure out how to win. Find a way to win. But I was putting him in a situation that was going to be tough. And one kid in particular found himself in that situation at district. He was down. He was about to lose. And I came out and I talked with him. And he said, you know, Coach, you've put me in this position before. I said, yeah, I did, man. He goes, I'm ready. It's like, whoo. <laughs> they came back and won that match. Sometimes the situations you find yourself in are not there because you've sinned. Sometimes you find yourself in tough situation because the Lord is breaking something, teaching you something, instilling strength in you to go through something in the future. So now let's connect all of that with believing the Lord. Romans 6 verses 16 says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness? I'm going to jump real quick to another scripture that says it's John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. In those two passages, they're talking about who you follow. Right? Who you are obedient to is whom you serve. In the passage I read in John, it says that the devil came to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's described as a thief. He's described as a murderer. So stealing and things like that is connected with Satan and his sinful nature. When we do those things, we're following in his footsteps. Not saying that you are a follower of him, but if you continue in that direction... You are a follower of him. Pastor says a lot of times to us as a staff, one time is not a pattern. Right? One slip up doesn't mean, oh no, I've sinned. I'm of Satan. No. But if you live a lifestyle like it, yeah, you are. You know, to follow Pastor Don, I've got to go where he goes. And so I've got to do what he's doing to stay there with him. And the same thing with the Lord. We've got to do what Jesus did to stay there with him. So now we come to the believing part of this, all right? How can we stay in step with Jesus? How can we follow him? How can we do the things he's asked us to do? Now we're going to camp out here for a little bit. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. There's a lot in this section that we're going to take a look at. But this is where the obedience starts. It starts with believing in Jesus. So 1 John chapter 5, starting off in verse 1. It says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Amen. So right there from the very beginning of that passage, it just says, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, you're born of God. So simple, a four-year-old could do it. You just have to believe. And then it continues, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is the love for God, to keep his commands. And I love this next sentence. And his commands are not burdensome. Doing what God asks you to do is not hard. A lot of times I have found that they are things that make me uncomfortable, sure, but they're not hard to do. Hey, go talk to that person. 
Is it hard to start up a conversation with somebody? No. You just use words. They have ears to receive the words. What's hard? Oh, I don't feel like it. I'm going to get embarrassed. They might think I'm weird. Well, you know what? A lot of people already think you're weird. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, there's a, billions of people on this planet. Chances are somebody looks at you and goes, that's a strange person. But his commands aren't burdensome. They're easy. All you have to do is say yes. In verse 4, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. So when you're born of God, you overcome the things that he's asked you to do. God asked Noah to build an ark. He had a 120-year period to do that. I was thinking about that earlier today, and I was thinking about being obedient to the Lord and Noah being obedient to the Lord. He had to believe that when God said, hey, I want you to build this vessel for this thing that's never happened before, and I want you to put all the animals on the planet on it, and it's going to save you and your family from this thing that you've never seen and don't know anything about. And you got 120 years to do it. I was thinking, like, what would that be like for me? It would be like, hey, Jackson, I need you to build a starship to fit all of CCCF because the flowers in all over the world are going to emit magma and you're going to have to fly to Mars to repopulate the human race when you come back. And you got, you know, 120 years to do it, so you're not even going to be alive for this, but your great-grandkids are going to be the ones that do this. Uh, okay. <laughs> But it's like he believed what God said because he knew who he was. He, had, he knew his voice. He had been talking with him. He had spent time with him. So when God said, this is what I want you to do, he said, hey, I know people are going to think I'm crazy. I know they're going to look at me strange. and They're going to wonder, what in the world are you doing? But God said it. I believe it. And I'm going to do it. My girls sing a little song that they picked up from school. It says, uh, uh, God said it. I believe it is all that faith demands. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his truth will stand. Do we truly believe that God's worth, words will always stand forever? And I believe if we do, we will do the things that he's told us to do. And then verse 5, it says, Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You want to overcome the world, believe that Jesus is who he says he is. So how does that go into obedience and obeying God's commands? Scroll down to verse 18. He says, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. So if you're born of God, you don't continue to sin. How are you born of God? You believe Jesus as the Christ. So if you believe Jesus is the Christ, you're born of God. If you're born of God, you don't continue to sin. Now again, one time does not make a pattern, but you don't continue. It's not a lifestyle. It should be getting harder and harder and harder. If it's getting easier and easier and easier to sin, you're going the wrong way. You're following the wrong person. Because it's very easy for Satan to sin. And if it's becoming easier for you... I'm just, it's a litmus test. That's all I'm saying, okay? It continues, it says, The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. So not only do you not continue to sin, Jesus keeps you safe and does not allow the evil one to get to you. You have to believe these things. And you say, well, I don't know. It doesn't make, any, doesn't make sense to me. How, how can this all work? How can I just believe and I'm okay? Well, let's keep reading. In verse 19, it says, we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Verse 20, we know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. The word says that, he says that my sheep know my voice. Is what Jesus says. He gives us the understanding. He calls us and we know that it's him. So now that we, those are the things that we believe. We believe that, that Jesus is the Christ. We believe that he can keep us. We believe that the evil one cannot harm us. And I believe that God gives us understanding to know him. And so David says in Psalms, he says, Your word I've hid it in my heart that I may not sin against you. He spends time in his word saying, Lord, what it is that you have said, I want to never sin against you. And that should be our heart too. We should not be 
wanting to do our own thing. Um, today, I was, I was at home, I was by myself, uh, gotten off work, and the Lord had given me some instructions on some things He wants me to carry out this week, and uh, it's going to take a lot of time, and I have till Saturday to get these things done, is what He told me. And so I was at home, and I was by myself, and, and, uh, and I needed to work on it. And I grabbed the remote, and I opened up Netflix, and I started watching a little bit of a show. And then I went and did the other things I needed to do. But I noticed when I was driving away from the house, I had the same feeling in my heart that I did years ago when I would look at pornography. And I was, like, really troubled and questioning, what is going on? What is this? And the Lord was saying that you've come to a place with me that this thing that you didn't ever describe as sin or think it was sin, I've asked you to do something and you didn't do what I asked you to do. When I say sinning gets harder and harder, that's kind of what I'm talking about. It starts to get to little smaller things and little tweaks. No longer are they big things that we would call big things, but it's just literally, you're not doing what I've asked. You know, And when I look at Chloe, my nine-year-old, she has higher responsibilities than my four-year-old. My four-year-old gets away with more, in a sense, because she's four. She doesn't quite understand, but my, my nine-year-old knows. You know, When I say, hey, y'all need to go get dressed for school, and she stands up, Chloe stands up and grabs a toy and starts playing with it. It's like, hey, I just told you to go get dressed for school. Oh, so, uh, why are you yelling at me, Daddy? Because you know. My four-year-old, though, she gets up, ah, look at that, it's like, Jenny, come on, baby, we got to go get dressed. Why don't you, why don't you get upset with her? Because she's four. But that's where we are with the Lord. As we get closer to him and he reveals things to him, those little things, they're not little anymore. Because why? Well, let's go back to one of the first things Pastor told me in preparing for this message, was that he is training us to reign. If we're going to be representations of him, if we're going to represent him, if we're going to be the people that God has said, I have given complete authority to, we can't have an ounce of our own will in there. And remember, you've, Pastor, you've been talking about where are those people that have said, thus says the Lord, right? And I don't think it's because he can trust us to do that yet. To be those people that go out and say, thus says the Lord, every single syllable I'm getting ready to utter here came from him. That's my prayer is that a word, not a word that I would speak would be of me, but would only be him. I don't want anybody to know where, where I end and where he begins. I want it to be so blurred. We are so mixed that when they, people look at me, they see him. That's been my prayer for years. And that's where we need to be for us to, to, to change the world. And the things we're coming to, the stuff that we're getting ready to come to, it could be as bad as you're walking somewhere and the Holy Spirit says, take a step to the right. And you take a step to the right and you miss a bullet. I mean, we don't know the, the, the craziness that's going on. Hey, don't go to the mall today. Or go to the mall today. You know, Lord, you don't have to explain everything to me because if he did, it would probably blow my head up anyways. <laughs> But we need to be able to follow him. I saw the other day a dad calling his son. Hey, son, come here, 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 come here. His son was standing in the street and a car was coming. And the kid was still just like completely oblivious. Like, ha, 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 ha. And it's like, dad's talking to you. And it's not like a, hey, son, come here. I mean, it was like, come here. I mean, it was forceful. And the kid's like, na, 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 na. And it's like, I, I don't want the Lord to be that with me. When he says jump, I want to jump and then go, was that high enough? You know, like, I'll do it again. <laughs> That's where we need to be is completely in tune with his spirit. Why? Because we believe that he holds all things in his hands. And you might say, well, Pastor Jackson, you're really talking a lot about being like a, like a robot or like having someone control your life. Well, let me tell you, my life wouldn't even be living right now if it wasn't for him. He has kept me safe from so many things. There have been a thousand things that he's told me, don't go do that. And it has protected me from things. Or he has said, do this. And it's protected me from stuff. His word tells us that he has a plan for us, a plan to prosper us, to keep us.
why would we doubt them? Why do you doubt them? I can tell you why I doubt him sometimes. It's because I don't like the way some of the things he tells me to do makes me feel. A lot of it has to do with my feelings. You know. But when we listen to him, the stuff that we get is so much better. Amen. You know? Amen. Right now, he and I, we're, we're working on, on Netflix. I'm just being honest with you. That's, that's where we are. We're, we're working on that. He's, uh, he's got it deleted off my phone. He's got it deleted it off my iPad, but we have one on our TV at the house. <laughs> and, you know, if it was just me at home, that'd be one thing. I'd say, all right, it's gone too. But I got two little girls that really enjoy StoryBots, so hey, you know. But it's, it becomes a temptation for me now, you know. And so it's something that he and I were working on, and but we're going to get there. We're going to get there because I love him and I believe him. And when he tells me, hey, this is, this is not what I have for you, it's because I have something else. Um, I won't. I won't put this person out here. But I was talking to somebody here recently, and they had taken up painting, or they were. They was a big hobby of theirs, and then they got saved, and they said they stopped painting. And I was like, well, I thought to myself, well, there's nothing in the Bible that says you can't paint if you're a Christian. And then they explained that there wasn't enough time to paint and read, paint and spend time with the Lord. And they said, you know what, I'm not even going to pay anymore because it takes up too much time. I'm going to just spend time with Jesus. Amen. And, you know, you just, I just told you my stuff I'm dealing with the Lord on Netflix. You know, a standard episode is about 42 minutes. You know how many chapters in the Bible you can read in 42 minutes? You know how many people you can pray for in 42 minutes? You know? And it was very convicting. And I said, okay, Lord. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because what you have for me is even greater than these TV shows that I'm watching. And if, if you're struggling with that too, I'm not picking on you. I'm airing my own dirty laundry, and you just happen to share the same dirty laundry that I have. But um, know that the things of God are just, they can't, they don't even come into comparison with the things that we have here in this world. They're, they're just completely different. The stuff that, that we have here, it's going to pass away. You don't have anything when you die. You can't. It doesn't matter how many shows you watch. It doesn't matter how many stats you know of people that play f sports or anything like that. It doesn't matter how many clothes are in your closet, how much food is in your refrigerator, how big your house was. None of that stuff matters. What matters is, and this is what Pastor mentioned earlier, was did I do what the Lord told me to do? He's not going to look at our house and say, well done. You had a big old house and a ranch and a car. You were doing great down there with all that money I gave you. He's going to look at us and say, you did good because you gave. You did good because you prayed. You did good because you did everything I asked of you. I mean, we know this. Look at your own children. You're proud of those that listen to you. And those that don't listen and don't heed your advice and do completely opposite, whatever it is you tell them, it's like, I mean, I love them, but man, what a disappointment. I don't want to disappoint the Lord. I want him to be happy. When he sees me. What is it that Miss Marva says whenever somebody's coming up? She says they could say, it's like, uh, yes, they could see help coming or help she's coming, right? <laughs> I want the Lord and Jesus to be excited when I show up. It's like, Jackson's here. Look, look, Father, Jackson's here. You know, that's what I want. I want him to be excited. Not, you barely made it, boy. Oof, no thanks. And the last scripture we're going to take a look at before I close here is Romans chapter 7, verse 4. It says, Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. You are no longer bound by pleasing the law, your job in this life is to please your groom, Jesus. You are bound to him. The one who was raised from the dead. Believe that he loves you. Believe that he died for you. And if you do, it says that you will bear fruit to God. Those things that you are striving to do become very easy. The Bible says that he has prepared those good works for us before time even began. 
You don't have to muster it up. You don't have to make it happen. It's as easy as just stepping in and doing whatever it is that he said. And if you'll do that, you will bear fruit that God will be pleased with. Because our godly comportment comes no longer from the law, but from the gift of grace by our union with Jesus. Let's spend time with him more and more. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for this day and for this time. I thank you for each person that's in attendance tonight. Lord, I ask that you would continue to convict hearts of things that you've been asking to be done, to be taken care of, just like you've been doing with me. Thank you for your convictions. Thank you for your gentle nudges. But nothing compares to the the gift of grace that you've given us. Thank you for being faithful even when we've been faithless. Thank you for showing us love and being tender with us. Cause us, give us your strength to obey. Because Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you did what you said you did. I believe that you were raised from the dead. I believe you died for my sins. My life is yours. Do with me whatever you want. And I know, Lord, there are others in this building that are echoing this prayer. Do with us whatever you want, Lord. This church, this body is yours. Everything is yours. We want to do your will. Father, we want to please you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for speaking to us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's say amen. Well, you know, tonight the Lord has really spoken to us. The word of God tonight was like a slow soaking rain. A slow soaking rain. There wasn't a lot of runoff. A downpour you get runoff. You can only accept it. It's a slow soaking rain. I want to ask If there's anyone here today, you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ, this is a perfect opportunity to do so. Do you want to give your heart to Jesus? That's the question. All that we do is about people being saved, people giving themselves to Jesus Christ. If that's you, you can raise your hand and you can come down to the front. I would like for you to do that. If that's you, please come. You can stand in the middle. Stand a little bit. Right there. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. lay hands on Debbie. Debbie, I want you to just repeat after me. I'm sure you know how to pray and talk to God. But let's do it like this. Just tell tell him just in just a very, very gentle way. Dear God, 
I need you. I want you to control my life. I want you to run my life. Because all we humans know how to do is to ruin our lives. So thank you for allowing me to come to you tonight and to give you everything that pertains to me. I ask you to forgive me for sinning against you. My sin sent Jesus to the cross. I thank you that he was willing to die for me. I accept his sacrifice. Thank you for saving me from all my sin and giving me eternal life. In Jesus' name, I pray. You know, one of the things that about God is it's so simple. And sometimes when we say these things, it's as though, well, maybe, maybe, you know, it, did, it wasn't an earthquake or, you know, it wasn't a big thunderbolt, but God heard. And the amazing thing is that as you continue to walk with him, you realize his love was so real. And the moment you prayed that, then God did something for you. That is, he transferred your destiny. You're not going there anymore. You'll be with him eternally. And I grew up hearing that. But one day I realized this is all real. And it was, it was the biggest and the best day of my life. And this is the best day of the rest of your life. I bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, on. Yeah, we're going to give you this Bible. And uh, my pen. And I'm going to sign this Bible for you, if you don't mind. We want to give it to you. Give us a couple of minutes, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Wow, super. It's time to go now. And why don't we all stand together and we'll go. Thank you again, Pastor Jackson. It was wonderful, slow, soaking rain tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. So, uh, Wow, I'm grateful for Debbie. I don't know. This is good. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and bless each other as we go by repeating after me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Let's go with God, everybody. We love you.